All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Revolution Fighting Championship. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've done it, and I've actually kind of um, off stream looked into a couple of things that uh, took took a little bit of interest. I, I took a little bit of interest in. Now, I guess just the way that it is with the media and TV and stuff like that is obscenely difficult to uh, get that get that taken care of to to you know get even a halfway decent TV uh, deal. Let me see. Like none of them are approachable for me. Way too small. Uh, let's see here. Active. Uh, minimum range, like, I guess a nun. I'm trying to think here. But yeah, I think like the smallest, the smallest one. Let me see here in America. You got like mid-level national. I'm trying to find some, like even a regional one, like even even MTV Two needs a mid-level national, high-level regional. I think that's like probably the the lowest, and it's already been filled up by UFC. So there's really not much of anything I could honestly do with any of the TV around here. Can't go through any surprise performance. Anyone else love it? Just be a one-off, but who knows? Oh, boy. Don't get my hopes up like that. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need that hope for a third season in my life. Feel like I feel like they just do two and then a movie or two, and then they just, yeah, done. That's what's interesting about Euphonium is they're actually doing a third season. I'm like, really? They never do that. Kyoto Animation is like the 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 valve of of anime producers. <laughs> um, so sorry, getting off, getting off back on track here. Create my own broadcaster. That is one thing I wanted to do. Now I talked about the three hundred and five thousand. I think on the last time as the current cost for getting this for your regular advertising deal here so yeah it shows events for free makes money with the advertising breaks more viewers more lucrative it is uh it can bring in new fans quickly it's not quite so reliant on big name fighters uh, the revenue streams always going to be smaller than what pay-per-view would have and i don't know how much pay-per-view would be obscene <coughs> but what i didn't think about was the idea of just doing an internet based one even at the smallest level right now is only seventy six thousand dollars which means we can honestly do it and i think that's what i want to do is to just do some sort of deal like that and i don't even know what i don't even know what to name it or which one of these i want to use network x would be interesting <laughs> Peer review America. Let me see here. There's a lot of free, free pictures here. Let me see here. I might just use something like that. Um, you know what? I'll just name it. I'll just name it Revolution Sports. And there we go. Technically, we do have an official. It is an insignificant, insignificant range. Let me see what SEG is. That's tiny. So it's it's smaller than that, but it is it is ours. It is it is owned by us, and we can actually uh, create a TV deal. So of course, obviously unlimited, and now all of our events can officially be. Uh, broadcast on some form of of uh, media. So technically, we technically have a broadcaster. Now, I don't think I can just upgrade the broadcaster, which kind of sucks. I'd have to look into it, but I think the way when I'd like looked at it, 
I don't think there's any way that I could um, simply uh, extend that. I would have to actually just make a brand new broadcaster, which something I'll probably worry about. Um, I don't know. Let me see here. If I do advertising and then internet based, I think I'd probably skip tiny, go to small or even medium. You know, maybe small. You know, that's 376,000. Whoops. That's not what I want. Small there. That's less than 200,000. You know, quarter million dollars. Eventually, I can get a quarter million dollars and have a medium, you know, medium sized um, broadcasting. So that might be something to look into later once I can actually maybe gather quarter million bucks. <clears throat> but I guess that would mean technically I should have a broadcast team, which obviously the, the character that I am isn't going to cut that. So I should probably have at least a broadcaster. So let me see here. Uh, not a fighter. Um, let me see here. I guess it doesn't matter what their name value is. Trying to see if there's anything else I need to know. No. Not a lot of like non-fighters anyway, so it should be fairly easy. Uh, let's see, 2,500. He's got strong play-by-play, -play anchoring. Let me see here. He's pretty good. I don't know if I want to... Sp is, it, is he worth the 2,500? Eva Fry pretty decent at, at at that type of stuff um i don't know if i want to go super cheap also i like the idea if i could get big john mccarthy to do that despite the fact that he's also actively refereeing <laughs> steven quadros he's 2000 i like him play by play anchoring analysis experience He looks like, um, oh fuck, I forget, I forget who's the, who's the guy in, um, he was the Green Goblin in the Willem Dafoe. He kind of looks like Willem Dafoe, at least in that picture. But yeah, I think in, you know, give him like four grand or sorry, two grand a show. For I don't know, like five years. Let's put let's put five years on that. See when he comes back, and we can actually have a um, we can actually have a broadcaster. <clears throat> I don't think is Eddie Bravo even Eddie Bravo is not really worth much except for the analysis. John McCarthy, I guess, wouldn't be too bad for analysis as well. But I think just the one guy should work for right now. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. <clears throat> also, on top of actually having a broadcaster and a broadcast guy, uh, Roy Soccer did his contract extension. I think there's still a few left, yeah. As well as guys that we were picking up, so... I'm just going to let it go like day by day here, but we should get most of them right here. All right, signed, signed, signed. Okay, so broadcast team is here. Yeah, I don't think I should be, I don't think my guy should be doing anything. Um, Let me see here. Set the default broadcasting team. I wonder... If I should spend that money, the money that I have been making financially, and I should get, even though it kind of breaks the uh, the illusion, if I should get someone like John McCarthy to uh, do my play-by-play -play <coughs> or do the uh, analysis, <clears throat> like I said, it kind of breaks the illusion, but I mean... Why not? Then I have an actual team that cost me, what, 3500 an event? That's not too bad. 
I make nine, ten thousand. Who knows how much more I might make with the um Oh, Pancrase is gonna take that guy. Alright. Mm -mm. Alright, so I think we just got my uh okay, that guy he's gonna sign with Pancrase. But yeah, John McCarthy, I'm just waiting on him. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Also, I thought about um, looking into. Let me see here. All right, he's gonna sign with Pancrase. John McCarthy's gonna come with us. All right. So okay, we do officially have a broadcast team. Experience as a unit, 0.5 percent. But at least we have someone with decent analysis on there. So, hey, look at that. A broadcast team and an actual broadcast, uh, actual, an actual broadcaster. It's insignificant, but it's something. Hey, Tai 2J. How this game works, all I know is sap being blown up in 13 seconds. I mean, that happens in wrestling and <laughs> MMA. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Well, we have been putting money towards sponsorships, so I'm I'm eagerly awaiting here in a couple weeks when we actually put on an event and to uh, hopefully make some money. I hope I didn't just kind of hose myself on that, but we'll find out. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Hang on. All the coughing. Mm. I just need some water. I've been doing pretty good up until, like, right as I was streaming. <sighs> All right. But hopefully, at some point, this might actually help raise our profile up on the um, rankings here a little bit, like, uh, to, to make us slightly more popular. I mean, after all of this, we're still only 12.8 in the regional so hopefully this raises us up just a little bit but we'll see <coughs> Whoa. also let me look at absences everyone's got roughly yeah eight days seems to be the idea the other thing that i think i want to do and i might wait until after revolution 21 First off, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it the eight days necessary, because that's when people are gonna be coming back, and I can actually sign them up for a fight. You, by the way, stole Revolution FC. You use the faction name is Jesse Gavin He is Rika, led by Jordan Grace. Interesting. Yeah, that's fine. I need to let someone know because they're like, "Hey, man, where did you get that? Where did you get that logo?" I, I, uh oh. They're like, where'd you get that logo? I didn't see it. And I'm just like, well, I, I made it. <laughs> Pretty simple, too. Oh, uh-oh, Nogera. Okay, so he's, oh, now he's now he's gotten even more into the jujitsu. All right. Let me look at the absences now. Okay, so we've got a good chunk of people back. So I think I'm going to make some matches here. Revolution 21. I want to fill this out first before I get a um, before I do much anything else. Now he's had two losses to Steve Lee. Nogera absolutely needs a a new a new victory here. Let me see. I'm trying to look at main eventers. Dwayne Kason. Um, ooh, Scott Adams. <clears throat> yeah, we don't want to do Steve Lee again. Gomi would be interesting, but I think I have an idea for both of them later. 
Uh, let's see, Hirono. I think he might be. I think I'm going to come back up here. Geza Coleman seemed to be okay. It wasn't. It's not fantastic, but. <coughs> That might be the guy. Barnett's not really a, 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 the guy I want with that, so I might just do Coleman. Because they're both high enough up. I think Monson and Parisian, yeah, they're potential main event. So this is definitely main event <clears throat> worthy. All right, so that's five. Barnett needs a fight. How many people? Ooh, Jens Pulver. That'd be pretty dope. Um, oh my god, is there anybody he can face? <laughs> Takanori Gomi. He already beat Gomi by decision. Um, I guess Jens Pulver. Why not? Let's just do that. Yep, add that fight. We're going to make that. Um, yeah, I think over Monson and Parisi, and I think this is going to be our semi-main. Luda Libre sounds like Lucha Libre putting on fake glasses and a mustache. I think I I think I meant one time made the joke that Luda Libre sounds like someone discussing Mexican wrestling with a, with a, a hair limp. Or, yeah. Uh, Scott Adams. You know what? I think I might wait on him. Let's get some lower tier guys in there. Let's get them a fight. He hasn't fought yet at all, so we'll put him in there against somebody. Uh, David Terrell wouldn't be too bad. <clears throat> Scott Adams Steve Lee uh, Takanori Gomi That'd be interesting I don't know if I want to give him that for his first fight though Let's go back up here Who was one of the first people? David Terrell yeah, it's not the greatest, but I think it'll work. I watched Luda Livre. They got Cain Velasquez and Roy Flummox. <laughs> Just a white dude in a in a. <laughs> That's El Generico's name when he's now <laughs> if he goes down to Mexico. Roy Flummox. All right, uh, Nakayama hasn't had anything. Let's see here. J.R. Palmer, Christoph Madeau. Um, you know what? Let's give let's give J.R. Palmer an, an opening fight, and we'll go we'll do one more guy. Um, let's see, Iwase. Dwayne Kason, I could do Dwayne Kason. There we go. All right, I wanted to make sure I had the fights lined up because I have a feeling that I rather pants are gone. The third. Uh. Uh, the main thing I wanted to do was the fact that there are, I think I'm going to be changing weight classes. I think I'm actually going to start putting in um, bigger weight classes. So I think 206 and up is going to be, oh, see, things would, uh, would clash with open weight. Would you like to retire the open weight title as the division is being closed? No. 
it's not retired, right? Okay. Don't worry, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> Weight classes, though. Um, heavyweight. All right, 206 and up. Male, prestige, eh, we'll do normal. Uh, don't create a title belt. It's already there. Make sure this belt is changed to be the heavyweight title, considering we do have a heavyweight champion. Whoops. I want that use weight class heavyweight. There we go. And the uh, weight classes for right now. For right now, I'm only gonna have two two men's weight classes. I'm gonna I'm gonna work my way up to having a bunch. <clears throat> so there's gonna be a heavyweight and a light heavyweight. Anything up to 205 is light heavyweight. Anything 206 and up is heavyweight. So there we go. Uh, sure. Let's do that. All right. So belt here. So Revolution FC. There's the belt. Light heavyweight. There you go. So officially the new uh, the open weight champion. I guess Nogueira is going to somehow be considered an, a heavyweight, a former heavyweight champion at some point. <clears throat> which and Dan Henderson as well but either way heavyweight and light heavyweight we're going to have some actual weight classes that means I need to actually pay attention to who is where because we need weight classes assigned so a welterweight is obviously going to be light heavyweight oh my god is there an easy way to do this? Probably not. That's fine. We'll see how many people are in each once we uh, get this dealt with. I'll be I'll be interested to see how many heavyweights and light heavyweights there are. It's almost a point where I don't know. Depending on how many light heavyweights there are, <laughs> we might be able to do even even you know a third one. Like, um, I don't know, put it as like middleweight. Let's see, best weight, put them at heavyweight then. I have a feeling we're going to need some heavyweights. <clears throat> there we go. Change that to 12, light heavyweights. Yeah, we'll have him fight at heavyweight. Uh, I gotta deal with this. I guess, I guess, honestly, if I wanted to change light heavyweight to like middleweight and then have um, an even lighter one that's like you know maybe one seventy, like a one seventy to two hundred five is your middleweight, and then below that is like lightweight. I'd have to see like where most people end up. <clears throat> I think I finally actually have enough people to do this, so. Yeah, I don't think there's an auto push for this. Uh, yeah, definitely heavyweight. <clears throat> Over light heavyweight. Sure light heavyweight. The belt hasn't been crowned yet. Yet it's better than your heavyweight belt. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Let's have him go light heavyweight for now. 
G, what's Barnett going to be? I forget. Is it Barnett? I, I, I forget if Barnett just simply has... Um, simply has... Um, enhancement issues or if it's if it's also weight cutting issues as well <clears throat> I think it might just be a PED issue over weight cutting wait wait he's not even gonna make it Wait, no. I think it's someone else that ended up getting signed. Yeah, depending on how many people are actually below like 170, it might be it might be worth my time to um might be worth my time to have a middleweight that goes like 170 to 205 and then anything below and then like below 170 is lightweight. I'll have to see. Ah, uh, yeah, heavyweight. Whoops. Light heavyweight. At least getting this done means I'm I'm not gonna have to do this again. Well, I probably will at some point, just because that's how it works. <coughs> oh. Abe looks legit looks 13. Oh, where was he at? No, I think that's the wrong Abe. That's Satoshi Abe? Oh yeah, him and his little T-Rex arms. Gomi. Light heavyweight. Alright. <clears throat> <sighs> All right. Hopefully, we get a good mix of we get a good mix of guys here. There's a lot of light heavyweights. I'll tell you that much. A lot of light heavyweights. All right. So I think I got it taken care of. Now. Just a look. Oh, I'm sure I can look at it. Come on. Tags. Uh, doesn't look like it. Current weight class. First, make sure no one's unassigned. All right. There's light heavyweights. All right. That's definitely a good, good amount of people. And heavyweight, which... Eh, is is less but i'll take it not bad commentary team can be the jr division i thought about naming it junior heavyweight i gotta be honest i thought about doing that <clears throat> all right um i think if we do that He's facing Coleman, who's a heavyweight, so we won't put the light heavyweight title on the line yet. And I don't want Takeuchi Suda to be that possibility. Mm -mm -mm. All right. As long as we got the fights taken care of, we can finish our final open weight fights before we get to June. <clears throat> June is definitely it. That's that's where we're gonna. Actually, let's just add that now while we're at it. So Saturday week four, June major show. Um, yeah, let's just do medium regional broadcast by Revolution Sports. Oh. We need to make sure this is being broadcasted. That's a good idea. These are actually going to be broadcasted. 
people can watch it. By the way, an an internet based um, show for like an internet based um, MMA MMA fights broadcasting in two thousand. I can only imagine what that would actually be like. <clears throat> All right, so let me see, California, da, da, da. Illinois, I haven't been to Illinois in a while, I might do Illinois, that's pretty good, or New Jersey, now I think I already have a Jersey show coming up, all right, move that to 23, where are we at here, Nevada, Illinois, oh, so I'll be back in Illinois again. Ah, it's all right. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. Heavyweight, light heavyweight. All right. So now, now the first fights of an actual, um, of an actual division. You know what? Ah, he lost to Arlovsky. But I'm but he did get a win back. So I might give him a match. <clears throat> I think I think I think uh, the world's toughest gas station attendant should have himself a uh, heavyweight title fight against Steve Lee. I think that's the next defense for Lee. This guy looks like he's going to kick the ass of just about anyone else. Uh, I'm going to give him off. Uh, Christoph Mado might be interesting. <sighs> I think I like that more just because Zentsinov, Zentsinov hasn't had a fight yet. So we'll do that. Light heavyweight. Uh, Gomi. Gomi will face somebody. There's not a lot of guys for him to face. Gomi is too good right now. Uh, God, Abe is the closest thing right now. To a non God, I hate to put Masatoshi Abe in that position. To have to face talking Horikomi. Oh no. And I think that should be our um semi main. <clears throat> Sutton. Uh you know I like that one. Do that. Katsumura. Uh, Katsumura and Pauling. Uh, what's the heavyweight one? Bork and Zensoff. That's not too bad. And light heavyweight Hirono and Wada. Uh, yeah, screw it. <clears throat> there we go. So they don't even officially list the open weight fights anymore, but all the we we got our open weight fights finishing up at Revolution Twenty One, and then we have official, um, uh, official uh, weight class fights starting with a heavyweight championship match. And at some point, I guess depending on how maybe 21 goes with some of the guys who are light heavy, who would be light heavyweights here, especially towards the top of the card, uh, we'll probably put them in, say, Revolution 23 or so uh, to determine a light heavyweight champion. So we'll get to that point. But let me see here. 20's got 9, 21's got 9, 22 has 7, which means we literally only need um we we literally only need probably two more fights 
to put on 22. So I'm pretty happy about that. <clears throat> Of course, this now means that, uh, especially if you're a light heavyweight, it is it is physically possible to miss weight. So we'll see what happens. <coughs> I should, you know, what I should probably also do. I should be looking into. Let me see here. Uh, Weigh-ins, of course, everyone's fine because it's all open weight right now. But what I should probably look into for people, if I just reset that, I should look into people who got um, cut. Because I haven't really looked at dudes once they leave. I should look again at dudes who maybe got signed elsewhere and then got cut. But I'll wait for it after this because we've been dealing with a lot of dealing with a lot of things already, so. Uh, one sec. <clears throat> All right. Arlovsky and Fabiano. Main eventing at Revolution 20 here in Illinois. Gazi Fujita fighting Ian Freeman. Mark Hall beating, fighting, <laughs> beating. I just immediately assume he's going to beat Bob Schreiber. Tony Amata taking on Tim Lajic. Jake Shields taking on Paul Buentello. And uh, most people assuming Arlovsky going to beat uh, Iha today. Iha has won the last three of five fights by decision, so we'll see what happens. I'd say this is, I believe it's two heavyweights. Well, Iha is, I guess, a lightweight. But I would say if Arlovsky comes out with a win, he will probably be the next guy in line. Especially considering he's had three wins so far. Arlovsky would definitely be the next guy in line to face Steve Lee. For the heavyweight championship. Granted, of course, he does win this match against Fabiano. Toby Amana and Tim Lajic, also another guy who has been kind of back and forth, but I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, like not consider uh, Lajic possibly getting a title match as well. I don't know if it would turn out extremely well for him, but we'll find out as he faces Toby Amada. Mike Pyle, Barrett Yoshida, I think two guys are going to be light heavyweights. Uh, most people going for Mike Pyle in this one. Jake Shields, Paul Buentello. Buentello is another guy who's been very back and forth. He did get a loss to Iha. Um, but, you know, we'll, we can always see what happens when he uh, takes on guys in his, in his uh, weight class. Another guy I wouldn't mind uh, possibly trying to fight for the heavyweight title. Didn't did I already do that? No, not yet. Not yet officially. <clears throat> but he's got to defeat Jake Shields, which is no small task. Uh, Mark Hall and Bob Schreiber uh, got to give it to the two guys out of seven who actually assume Bob Schreiber could actually pull off a victory. Um, any named guy, be it Pancrase or Revolution, he has never officially beaten. So he has not won a fight yet in Revolution. So give it to these guys who truly believe that Bob Schreiber could actually get a win against Mark Hall. And we actually have a women's open weight fight. I believe it was supposed to be Tuffel against Jackson. And I think Tuffield got hurt, so Casey Nolan is going to be fighting Mary Jackson. Uh, the assumption, of course, I think being that um, Jackson is going to uh, sort of annihilate her on this one. But you never know what will happen. Brandon Lee Hinkle, Ryan Bow. Ryan Bow is going to be a light heavyweight. Brandon Lee Hinkle, obviously a heavyweight. Uh, got a loss against Frank Trigg, but other than that, he had been doing pretty well for himself. Uh, the last year or so. Another guy who consider a contender for the heavyweight title. Of course, if he uh, can beat Ryan Bo here. Kazuyuki Fujita and Ian Freeman. Most people assuming uh, Fujita is going to get the win. Has not, has not fought yet officially. 
and uh, facing another heavyweight in Ian Freeman, who's done well for himself in general. He's 1-0, and oh, so it'll be interesting to see if he can possibly overcome uh, Fujita. Kit Cope, Greg McIntyre, very uh, back and forth between them. We'll see uh, what happens as that is our opening fight. John McCarthy, the referee, as well as the color guy. <laughs> Oh man! See, I knew it was one of those things where it's like, man, I want, I want the, I want a, a team instead of just the one guy. And John McCarthy made the most sense, but also this. I apologize. I'm gonna, I'm trying to get some water in me right now. Mm. Plus, these are also two lower level guys, so I'm not putting too much um idea into into their fight but you never know cope cope seems to be doing pretty well considering i think i i got him and he seemed like he was definitely going to be a tomato can so him getting some decent wins would be nice neither one of these guys uh have a team to go to <laughs> <coughs> oh mcintyre trying to get uh yeah actually <laughs> Probably should use that jujitsu. Let's see. Quiz, close quarters boxing. All right. McIntyre's got him down to the ground, which would be good because it sounded like Kit Cope uh, won the first round. So we'll see about the second. There we go. God, it feels. I, I was going to say it feels late, but I'm like, oh, yeah, it is late. Let's see here, 1919, 2018 McIntyre, and 1919. We're going to a third round. Yeah, it's been a holiday weekend, so it's been a long weekend, but I do actually get an extra day off. They they are not running they are not running uh what I what I figured they would run, and so I'm not needed to be there. I could have volunteered, but I was like, nah. I like money, and I probably should take the money, but eh. there's not that there's not there's there's only like one more. There's only like one more possible. Uh oh. Oh shit! Hang on, hang on. So Cope tries to put him in a rear naked choke. He actually kind of out jujitsu's McIntyre. And it looked like he was probably going to tap out, but he was saved by the bell. So let's see. 28-29 Cope, 29-28 McIntyre, and 29-28 Cope. So a split decision. Kit Cope with the win here. Wow. Kit Cope actually coming out with a victory. Pretty good. Spon thanks to sponsors for backing him and his uh, family and friends and supporters. He says that he isn't happy about the result. Feel it should have been a clear, unanimous decision victory. Either way, scuffed Corey Graves gets the win as we move on to Fujita's pro debut against Ian Freeman, who is 8 0. Fujita, 30 pounds heavier. But I mean, they're both heavyweights, so, you know. <sighs> you know, I did have um <clears throat> I did have uh, an interesting interaction on my uh lunch hour. There is a uh, comedian Patrice O'Neill who has gone on before uh at least when he was alive, he would go on about uh Asian people. And how he says, he's like, I go to this Chinese place and it's amazing Chinese food and amazing. It's great food, but they don't ever treat someone like a human. He's like, they, they he's like, I go in there like three times a week and they, they don't, they, they just pretend like they've never seen me before. Like, every time is the first time I've ever gone in there. 
and they don't seem to understand loyalty. And I thought about that because there's this uh, teriyaki place that I like to go to. I go there pretty much every Saturday. And it, 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 it crossed my mind this week because I always use DoorDash to just do pickup. So I DoorDash it at pretty much the same time every Saturday. Let's see what happened here. 2018 for Kazuyuki Fujita getting the win over Ian Freeman. Yeah, give me a second on that story. Average fight, but you know what? Fujita praises his team at Team Fujita. The sponsors and fans, he celebrates winning his debut fight. Brandon Lee Hinkle versus Ryan Bow. I'm, I'm pulling for Hinkle on this one. I'd like, to, I'd like to see more contenders for the heavyweight title. I feel like Arlovsky is going to win the main event and then he's going to beat Steve Lee and then no one's going to be able to take that title off him for a while. Hopefully I'm wrong. <coughs> but yeah, it, it came across my mind because I DoorDash every every Saturday this, this teriyaki place to go pick up and... I even went there this past, I even went there the other day, you know, just on Saturday and they're nice enough. Like they're, they're real nice. They're like, Hey, how you doing? And then he like points to the menu to ask what I want. And I just have to be like, no, I, I door dashed. I'm the door dash person. I always do that. <laughs> He's like, Oh, okay. It's just one of those things that like it hit me there when I was like, oh fuck. How do they not re I'm I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a non-recognizable person, I guess. I don't know, maybe. I just feel like a giant six foot four dude coming in every Saturday would would um help things out a little bit. Oh, split draw. I think that's the first time I've seen that where one guy thought 1919, one guy thought one guy, Hinkle did it, one guy thought Bo did it. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen that. Now, I think it's Hinkle who is busted open right now. I thought that's what I saw. But Hinkle might have this here. Uh, because he seems to be controlling Bo here. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much going on here. I think that's uh, going to be the time limit. I think Hinkle uh, didn't do any significant damage, but it was enough, I think, to uh, get the win here. And I'm sure he's going to be unhappy. It's like, it should have been obvious. Well, he praises Bo for a tough fight. Okay, well, there you go. Brendan Lee Hankel at least understood that he went through a bit of a fight to get this and um, managed to scrape by. That's good. KO Casey Nolan and Diamond Mary Jackson. Let's see what happens here. Mario Yamasaki, the referee. Oh, no. <clears throat> it's interesting. I wonder how much... I wonder how long I'm going to have three women in my women's division until like 2009 I'm just gonna have nine years of three women oh my god is that immediately oh my god I think it's I think it's no no oh shit so who went down at Jackson yeah Diamond Mary Jackson knocked her ass down but was not able to finish her I would love to know what technically constitute, like what constitutes like, okay. Mary Jackson is a kickboxer. Like what is a mixed, like mixed martial arts. So are you learning just a little bit of everything? Is it just a, uh, you're not really, you're, you're, you're kind of good at a lot of things, but you're not really good at anything in particular. Cause I feel like that's not a, not the greatest thing to, to have. I don't know. 
That's just my that's just my personal opinion. That's what I was doing in college was the equivalent of of was the 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 educational equivalent of mixed martial arts. I was going to I was going to learn a little bit about everything but not have a specialty in anything in particular. And then I also found out that that probably uh, if I if I had to try to search for a job using that, uh, it would have been very difficult <laughs> because I guess employers are not big on having a jack of all trades type uh, business computer person. They, they would more appreciate um, specialist people. Well, Mary Jackson getting the win. She didn't knock her out, despite the fact that she almost did in the first minute and a half of the fight. She managed to, credit to Casey Nolan, she managed to make it work for, um, you know, for a couple of, a couple more rounds. But wasn't able to make anything happen here as uh, Mary Jackson gets the win. <clears throat> Full quote is Jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, I think that basically would have been that would have accurately described my um my my education that I was that I was getting. Now I'm the jack of no trades. <laughs> Sorry, I was hearing like weird sounds. I still hear it, but I think it's I think it's just out in the living room. I don't feel like going out in the living room. He's not here and he wouldn't be watching me anyway, but <laughs> my roommate was um describing to me his um, I guess a problem he was having where he has this uh, f female friend of his <coughs> who's been coming over like three times a week now at least and he like told me a few days ago he's like ah, I know she really likes me but I don't know I don't think my heart's in it and so I told him I'm like alright he's like I don't know what to do about it I'm like oh, I just be honest, be upfront. <laughs> and then she's here again tonight, and I'm just like, I don't. Are you just? Are you just? <laughs> like, who are you? Who are you lying to right now? Hey, third round, let's go. The fact that Bob Schreiber is still in this is amazing to me. If Bob Schreiber can pull this off, you look shattered. God, I hope he I hope he does it. I hope he can do it. I'd act normal until she makes a move, to be honest. Yeah, it's just one of those things where he's just like, ah, I don't really feel into it. And he's like, then why is she still here? <laughs> Too many people assume someone's making moves when they aren't. Yeah. Uh, I think that was yeah, more more towards Hall than Schreiber. Let's see. Yep, Mark Hall getting the win. Oh, well, that's all right. Maybe she just wants friends. I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah, the friend. I don't know. She doesn't, it's not like, okay. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Are we talking friends or friends because we're talking the second one i i can maybe believe that but <laughs> it's definitely not the first one uh thanks all the sponsors for backing him and also thank his family friends and supporters he says it was a tough fight gives a show of respect to uh local jobber bob schreiber all right jake shields paul buontello let's get it going Maybe I don't know. He seems to have the idea that maybe she like she wants more, but maybe she doesn't. Maybe he's just reading too much into it. I don't know. It's just it's just odd. It's like okay, whatever. 
<clears throat> Not anything I have to. I don't think I have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a point. I think it was on Saturday morning, Sunday morning. It might have been Sunday morning. No, because it wasn't this morning. So it had to have been Saturday morning. Saturday morning, and I was getting ready for work, and I go to get, like, go out the door, and I had a monster in the fridge, and it sort of, like, intersects with the, the living room, so I just get, like, a glimpse of most of the living room as I'm going to the couch. I don't see them, but I can hear something. I, I don't know how to explain. I hear her. <laughs> Oh wow, we actually got a we actually got a finish. See, I'm not I'm I'm not used to finishes. <laughs> he jujitsued Paul Buentello and gets the tap out. <laughs> All right, there you go, Jake Shields with the victory. I'm, I apologize for being just kind of like I'm usually more into the fights, but yeah, I don't know. So many of them have just been decisions at this point, and I'm just like, fuck. Can you just finish a fight? <laughs> <clears throat> that and it, it really depends I guess on the fighters and how long they've been around do you hear someone stirring a pot of mac and cheese oh my god I didn't I don't think I heard that but yeah but <laughs> I didn't let him I didn't exactly let him just like let him uh, like he knew I heard because I closed the I closed the the um, fridge and walked out like so he knew that we both knew that I heard what I heard and at least he wasn't trying to like he wasn't trying to like Jedi mind trick me but yeah he came in like later in the day and he's just like tired and he's just like uh one of the guys called in to work and I had to work my ass off all day I'm like yeah I know and you got an early start today and he's just like Okay. <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> Listen, I didn't know what time it was. I'm like, I, I don't care. It's just as long as you're not all full of piss and vinegar about the fact that I might be walking out into the front room because I live here, too. He's like, I wouldn't do that. I'm like, all right, just to make sure. Shit, we got a knockout, too. Holy shit, two, two fights finished. Boy, that was fast too. There wasn't even like an idea that that was just gonna that, that was gonna happen. That wasn't even like a wear someone down. That was a flash knockout. Pyle just flash knocked him out. It's done. Mike Pyle with the victory over Barrett Yoshida. There you go. Thanks everyone connected to AMC Pancration. And he's a jujitsu guy too. He he. He's a jujitsu guy who just fucking flash knocked out someone. But he praised Yoshida for his skill and toughness. And he's fighting another Brazilian jujitsu guy, but he's working on a kickboxing academy. That's nah, all right. Toby Amada taking on Tim Lajic. I wonder why Lajic doesn't have a team. He's been around for long enough. He probably should have a team. That's all right. Whatever. I should have some mail coming in Tuesday. <coughs> it's been um, it's been a <clears throat> I don't I don't know how to describe it's it's been an ordeal. So I put on Twitter at one point that I've been I've been trying to get NHL 2K10 for the PS3. Because I want to, you know, make some teams, get some like new, um, get some like new rosters that are still being put up and try them out. And I heard that making that stuff work on, making that stuff work on PS3, like as far as transferring like roster saves and all that, far easier than Xbox. And uh, from what I've seen, it seems like it. Because I can't even get it to work anymore on um, 360. But I bought 
I bought a copy for like ten bucks on Amazon. And as I put on my on my social media, I bought NHL two K ten. It says on Amazon NHL two K ten for the PS three. Man, we're actually getting finishes tonight. Holy hell. Hang on here. Uh, oh, that was right at the... Man, that was a bell. That was right at the bell, too. Holy crap. Lajic got caught by the triangle. He tapped out with two seconds left in the fight. More than likely, probably still would have lost by decision. But he finished it with two seconds left in the round. So thanks, everyone, to Dixon's Dungeon, who's uh, uh, helping him and his sponsors. He's got a lot of respect for Lajic and praises his toughness. Main event, Andre Arlovsky, who will probably beat the snot out of Fabiano. What can I say? When I show up, people finish. Good Lord. So, yeah, as I put on my social media, I got EA's version of NHL 10. I'm like, well, that's not the right game. And I probably could have, I probably could have, like, returned it and gotten the right thing. But I was just like, fuck it. (laughs) This probably just isn't, isn't worth having to deal with. So I went on to eBay and spent another 10 bucks buying a a copy from japan so on that note i actually did get a japanese copy of nhl 2k10 for the ps3 and it works so everything is as it should have been however i also didn't realize that there is a difference between this japanese and english versions as far as saves are concerned and it's a massive pain in the ass to try to and sort of impossible at this point because all the all the um, all the all the um, software used to try to convert US save files to Japanese save files even for the same game doesn't really work anymore so I'm trying one more time where some dude on eBay I looked at the disc the picture of the disc shows an an American version of NHL 2K10 for the PS3. Another $10. Actually, it was like $15. With, um... Oh, damn! Wow, we getting a lot of finishes here. Eh, good, good for Fabiano for at least kind of, um... You know, dealing with it and doing his best there. He is a jiu-jitsu guy, but Arlovsky was just too big. So, yeah, it was with a bunch of other hockey games, so... So probably be my last attempt at trying to get this game. But it is kind of funny. Before I get to this, I want to I have the the back of the Japanese version of NHL 2K10. And I don't think this is on the American version, but the one bit of English they have at the very top is, you know, Alex Ovechkin yelling. And then it says in English is party now that's all it says is party now and the r is backwards (laughs) i don't know if that's supposed to be a a um ovechkin thing or what it is but i just like the fact that the japanese version says is party now with a backwards r (laughs) Okay. <laughs> there you go. Andre Arlovsky praising his team at Lions Den, his sponsors and fans. He praises Iha for a tough fight. Critical rating is good. Got better than I wanted. Commercial rating is higher than I need it to be as well. Commercial rating needs to be at least a 30. I prefer at least over a 35. Show is broadcast by Revolution Sports. We pack 244 people in. And uh, did not have a commentary. We did have a commentary team, though. I need to look at that again. 1.5%. Hey. That that actually did turn out better like I, like I thought it would. And we made 15 grand, so there you go. Sponsorship ads and subs. There you go. The ads. 
are uh, definitely going to help us out. I don't know if we, we, we haven't really had ads for... Yeah, that worked out pretty well. 16,000 in ads. I like this broadcast thing. We're going to be making some money. I mean, we're definitely going to be losing money this month, but that's all right. Uh, who's on my short list? She's not on it. Unshortlister. There we go. You didn't have a team unless dude was wearing a headset while refing. <laughs> A good point. Only characters on non fighter contracts are eligible. Mm. It's weird they didn't have it because I I particularly have them set up to do it. And I know it was it was on Revolution Sports, so I don't know how it didn't have a broadcast team. That's probably also why I had a decent amount of money, because I didn't have to pay my broadcast guys. That's odd. I feel like there's something I'm missing then. Um, maybe. Oh! That's what it is. It's because I didn't put them in there originally... So 22 should have them because they were already a broadcast team. Yeah, they were already a broadcast team when I made Revolution 22. 20 and 21 didn't have that because it was already made beforehand. Now I have a broadcast team. All right. Now they're going to call 21. Cool. Everything worked out. I like how my credibility is doing quite nicely. Stability is doing quite well, too. Nothing's nothing's changing there. We're a highly credible, highly credible um, company. All right. Um, let's go one more day. <clears throat> See who comes into the world. Mario Sperry. I feel like I recognize him. Don't know where from. But that's a face I sort of recognize. But I need to talk him to moving to America. Oh, never mind. Oh, he's a permanent member of Brazilian top team. That's probably why. He's one of the Brazilian top team guys. Yeah, he's the founder of it. Feels Pete Spratt. Go ahead and just grab him. Four years, ten fights. I think uh, everything's good there. Nuri Shakir. I'll take anybody. There we go. Nick Sarah. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> and then finally Moyes Moyes Mosey I don't know Moyes probably Moyes Moyes um is he anyway he'll probably move yeah negotiate Four years, ten flights. There you go. <clears throat> Jake Shields joined a new team. All right. I think I'm going to get to week four. Ooh, I should probably look real quick. Welterweight. Welterweight, welterweight, and heavyweights. But I should probably try to find more heavyweights. I want to look at something. Ah, my head itches. I want to look for guys who may have been cut. So I'm looking for someone who's unemployed, who's an active fighter, who is a man. Um... 
guess, yeah, he can fight at heavyweights. And, yeah, I think everything else I'll just weed out on my own. Uh, you know what? His max name value, probably like a low-level regional guy. There you go. Cheaper guys. That's what I'm looking for is cheaper guys. All right. Alex Andrade. Dick Vrige. This, this dude really does look like an 80s movie villain. Like like he like he was in Street Fighter or something. Ova Sinosich. I feel like I've seen him before. I don't know. Let me see here. Jonathan Ivey. <clears throat> this dude has had a lot of fights. Takashi Yamamoto. I would prefer a guy who's actually supposed to be a heavyweight. This guy says light heavyweight, but I I prefer a guy who's just a straight up heavyweight. Iron Man Travis Fulton. Yamamoto. Oh, he's he's with the team. Uh, Travis Fulton. I think I I think I was gonna get him at one point. And then I didn't. Probably because P- Pride got him. All right. Uh, four years, ten fights. <coughs> nine, nine, nine. Here we go. Let's see, Satoshi Hanma. Preferably people I can convince to come this way. Let me see here. Killing Ron Fields, ha. It really should be Ron Killing Fields. Ron Sperry. No, Sperry's not gonna. Um, Lee Hasdell. I might get him. Ah, we'll we'll see what he. Oh. Oh, he's in England. Oh, here, let's talk to him. Move your base. Come to America. Fight for me. Go. Upgrade my heavyweight division. Papa San Larry Papadopoulos. This looks like an interesting dude, just in general. I want this dude just for for no for no my, not much more reason other than he just looks intense he just looks like a dude who can get some shit done move your base I don't even care if you're a a light heavyweight guy there we go make that offer cool All right. So I'll take some failures from other guys and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Let's see here. Barrett Yoshida left his team. Takeuchi has a medium pectoral injury. Oh, he's recovered. Okay. Good. Come on. Uh, Hasdell signed a contract. Hasdell signed. Sarah signed. Fulton signed. I'm going to wait for the last few guys before I... <coughs> Before I assign them. And there they are. 
All right. Um, let's reset that. Come over here. Roster. These guys unassigned. Oh, did they get automatically assigned? I want to see that. Um, like Nourish Kier, Light Heavyweight. Okay. So they got auto assigned. That's kind of cool. That's good. So Light Heavyweight's pretty big. Heavyweight's, I mean, definitely much smaller, but we got a, we got a few people now. We got a couple extra guys. Making sure Rimbon, Hasdol, okay. I thought I, I thought one of the other guys would probably be a heavyweight. Let me see. I wonder if Glunder should move over to heavyweight. Can he? He can. I'm wondering if I wonder if Glunder could probably do better at heavyweight. I don't know. He did lose to Steve Lee. Takeuchi's a middleweight. That was heavyweight. That was I mean he's had a mix of people, but I think if we move Glunder, that might be interesting. <clears throat> Who is this? Oh yeah, Kinu Kunioku. Um, yeah, he'll stay it. He'll stay there. All right. I think this means I could probably finish up the matchmaking on twenty-two. All right. Scuff Kurt Angle's back. He needs a fight. Everyone is too shit for him. Uh, let's look at uh, let's look at Travis Fulton. Okay, we got a fight. Scuff Kurt Angle needs better fights. Uh, light heavyweight, we definitely can get a couple of those guys. Let's see here. Pete Spratt, maybe with. Um, we are in Illinois. Jeff Curran can fight him. That might be pretty good. Let's do that. All right. Now we got a good mix there. One, two, three, four heavyweight, five light heavyweight. It's a good mix. All right. There we go. We actually have it filled out, which means I can just zip my way and just go to there. Oh. <sighs> I don't know why I've just opted um, these past few days to uh, just play Minecraft. Just cause I guess it's because it. Uh, I think it was it was also something that I tried to con I, I keep trying to convince my roommate of because he just like I just want because he watches a lot of YouTube because he tells me he's like I just want I just want a game that is sort of mindless that I don't have to think too much on. I'm like, well, Minecraft is good for that because I could just throw on a podcast and, you know, just do my thing. That's another thing over the last, ooh, Chuck Liddell beat Kazu. Wow. Liddell Sakuraba. That is dope. You're literally playing Minecraft right now. You're building your wrestling arena. Nice. Uh oh, that's three straight losses. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking, Mr. Sakuraba might not be long for this world in uh, in uh, Pride. Meanwhile, Liddell is uh, probably doing quite well. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's kind of nice because I've been. Getting into 
I'm trying to see if they start getting rid of... Uh, ooh, speaking of... I was looking at rankings. I should probably look at the rankings. Heavyweight, update it. Uh, Travis Fulton immediately, number one. Why? There we go. Hmm. Just the one. There's literally three women, but they're not going to rank the other two. Ugh. But I've been getting invested this past week in um, a couple of uh, crime podcasts because it's just kind of interesting listening to things like it's like it's sort of unsettling because it's like, okay, here's this hour long podcast that's about like this murder or string of murders. But it's just kind of interesting to hear the process and, you know, various things that have happened. And I found a couple of them that are pretty nice to listen to. So it's 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 kind of nice, obviously, because of the podcast format and everything. Um, I, I, I usually just try to um, last podcast on the left. Yeah, the two the two that I've gotten into is case file, true crime. I just call it case file. Yeah, I think you can find it. You can find it on YouTube as well. And then True Crime Garage is what I just got into the last like couple days. And uh, yeah, I like it because it's it's just like you know discusses a single case and a lot of the um, you know a lot of the the things surrounding it. It's always interesting to hear ones that are just straight up unsolved. Where you're just sitting here like, you know, you go through, it's weird to go through like an hour long podcast talking about all the things that are going on. And then, and then it ends with like, you know, as of 2019, uh, they, there's no, there's no known killer. I'm like, oh, fuck. <clears throat> I want to stop here just because I saw Boss Rootin' on Fighting Talk. And then Vitor Belfort, I guess, is pissy with Sakuraba. I like how there's a Belfort Sakuraba feud going on. Feels weird. They gave him. Bur All right, listen to the last part of the left series and the Shoemaker. I think it's two to three episodes. He's one of the funniest things that was the people's voices and act shit out. Interesting. I might have to check that out because I got plenty of time in my day to be listening to podcasts. And it's just interesting to listen to. I think the most interesting one, the most interesting one this week that I've been paying attention to, which is how I found True Crime Garage as well, is uh, the Delphi murders. Because it's like two 13-year-old girls who got murdered on a hiking trail in Indiana in the middle of nowhere. And it just happened two and a half years ago. And one of the girls actually took like a video. Like there's video and audio of the guy. It's a blurry video and like two seconds of audio. But there's physically like footage of this person but it's been like I like it's they can't quite figure it out because I guess they still need those like one or two things to to try to get like a solid suspect. It's just amazing that it's like in the, it's it's one thing when I hear about the ones that happened in like the 70s or 80s, even the 90s, because I'm like, OK, there was there wasn't cell phones, really. There wasn't. You know, especially if it's like the 70s or something. It's like, yeah, there wasn't really solid DNA testing. And they didn't keep that good of, an eye, of, a, of a handle on certain pieces of evidence. But, like, this was just two and a half years ago. There was footage taken from a cell phone. Like, they have a blurry picture, but it doesn't really help. They have some audio on it, and it's like they still can't solve it at this point. It's like, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> 
Well, Alexander Franca Noguera is back in the main event. This time he faces uh, Giza Kalman in what is going to be the last official um, sort of light heavyweight versus heavyweight, sort of a uh, open weight uh, fight. So he's had the last couple of fights where he lost to Steve Lee to try to get a title back, but he can go after a new title here in the future now that he's in a different weight class. We'll see what happens in our final open weight bouts. And uh, a lot of people going for Noguera on this one. Cops are dumb as shit a lot of times. <coughs> <coughs> so just to, just to go through that real quick. I know. I Yeah. They only know so much because people and that's that's another thing that I've been hearing that that I that is seems to be that's what seems to be a recurring thing is how many thousands of tips show up and they have to like wade through how much of it is just bullshit. And it's like, uh, I can only imagine you're trying to find a murderer and then someone just calls up the, the, the hotline just to troll someone. It's like, man, that's not helpful. <clears throat> so yeah, Noguera looking to get uh, some some energy back against Coleman, Josh Barnett, and Jens Pulver. Most people pulling for Barnett. Of course, he is a, a much bigger dude, six foot three heavyweight compared to Jens Pulver, who is a five seven lightweight. And uh, we got Jeff Monson versus Carol Parisian, another big guy heavyweight. Except he's only five nine. Parisian is actually taller than him, but he is. Um, quite a bit lighter than him and uh, most people going for parisian over monson on that one is there a takeuchi and genki sudo very close i think this has this this is what i would assume to be um possibly looking into uh a couple of potential what's the word uh, a couple of potential um Oh, what's the word? Contenders for uh, for for a title. So you know, a couple of guys who both are going to be in the light heavyweight division. A couple of guys who I think will do quite well in it. Speaking of Naoya Uyamatsu and Wildman Thomas Denny, another couple of guys who I think will do pretty okay. Uyamatsu especially, he's had a couple of uh, hiccups, but really those last hiccups were against top level competition. In Takanori Gomi and Alexander Franco Noguera. Nothing to sneeze at here with those last two losses of his. So I think Uematsu is poised to be one of the top guys in the light heavyweight division. <clears throat> we'll see if he can overcome Thomas Denny, though. Rodney Glunder and Joe Camacho. Most people going for Glunder in this one. He could use it. He's had uh, five of his, or yeah, four four losses in his last five fights. His only win against Alex Cook. Hoping to get a win over Joe Camacho here, who is one and one. Beat Bob Schreiber, which everyone's beaten Bob Schreiber. Lost Thomas Denny. We'll see how he can do against Glunder. The Crusher, Tatsuya Kawajiri versus David Terrell. Most people going for Kawajiri on this one. This is his pro debut against Terrell. We'll see what happens here. Kawajiri, a big favorite to win in this event. Takumi Nakayama, J.R. Palmer. I think it's been a little bit since J.R. Palmer last fought back in February at Revolution 18. So it's been it's been uh, a few events here. And, of course, uh, Nakayama making his pro debut. Very mixed between them here. And opening up his... Uh, Shigatoshi, Iwase, and Dwayne Kason. I think it's been a little bit for Kason, too. His last fight was also back in February, so he's it's been a few months since he as well uh, has fought, and that is going to be the opening to that one as I actually read the chat real quick. Michael, what's up? Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. It has been a little bit. <clears throat> Smart criminal puts in a fake tip with knowledge the public doesn't know very far away from the actual criminal. That would be that would be interesting. There was one that um, I still haven't listened to the second part of it, and I'll probably listen to after I'm done with this. And it's oh god, it's about the murder of like this um, 
young real estate agent. I'd have to I have to look up the name again. But it happened in like 2007 or 8 something like that, I think. And she had a BlackBerry and I as far as I know they still haven't found the couple who did it. And like one of the big things that could have possibly linked them to it was the phone calls that they made to her, but it was made from a burner phone. It paid for with cash at a convenience store like eight months previously so that they didn't have they didn't have um you know the the security footage at that point because no one had asked for it you know a lot of flashbacks to your 97 ufc save yeah it's it's been interesting i'm hoping we get another uh big name here soon you know we are getting to like 2000 so i think we're gonna start getting some guys who I think there's a lot of the guys already who are known in the mid 2000s that um, are already mostly here, but yeah, you never know. Dwayne Kason getting the win here by unanimous decision, average fight, but he does thank his team, his sponsors. He says it was a tough fight and gives a show of respect to Iwase, who loses in his pro debut. Speaking of Nakayama and J.R. Palmer. But yeah, it was just one of those things where let me let me see here. Where the fuck was it? Lindsay Buziak, that's who it was. That's what I was listening to. Apparently, the thing about that one as well is that after that happened, there was so much misinformation that it was just it was insane to try to get through it. Like to try to wade through it because of how much misinformation was going out around there and of course like the only real communication that they can attribute to them was from a burner phone that was bought like nine months previously and was only made to make those like it was only activated to make those calls the name and address provided were the name was fake and the address was a business address that didn't have anything to do with it and it's just like man i can't it's just insanity and then, of course, the phone didn't didn't ping afterwards, so they probably destroyed the phone immediately. It's like, God, that is organized. It's just a, it's just amazing, and it, it reminds me to like lock my door <laughs> at night. I'm like, God, I know it's such a non kind of a non issue, but it's like, fuck, it's just it's stupid. Hey, we got round three coming up. Watch. Now that we had so many finishes in the last event, we're just going to get nothing but, um, but like, uh, decisions. We, we blew our, we blew our finish load last event by actually having knockouts and submissions. Now it's just going to be, now it's just going to be decisions. <clears throat> Oh, maybe. Rear naked choke? No. I think Nakayama's got this one. I think he took over J.R. Palmer here and uh, got got that one. Let's see what happens here. 29-28 for Nakayama. Getting the win in his pro debut. Thanks his team, his sponsors. Happy to have won. He's happy to be here. Well, that's good. We'll see what happens in like a year or so. Got to October 2008. I'm hoping to get that far. I think eventually that'll happen. I'm already in 2000, so that's pretty good. It, it's it's good when you can get through the, the game kind of quickly because you spend the first three years not able to do more than five or six events a, a year. But I'm, I'm keeping on it to try to make sure I can do, um, you know, monthly events starting this year. So I have stuff at least through June, and I've been doing extremely well. I should be able to continue monthly events. Do I have any championships in the game? I have, well, I just, this is actually the final event because I've been running open weight fights. So it's like, you know, like this guy, 175 and 205. Now, both these guys are technically still going to be in the same weight class, but I did split up my open weight into heavyweight, which is 206 and up, and 
light heavyweight, which is everything up to 205. Oh, tried to shoot in on him. And so now I have a heavyweight and light heavyweight division. And my open weight champion was a heavyweight right now. So he's the heavyweight champion. I also have a women's open weight division, but there's only three women because there wasn't a whole lot of them before like the mid 2000s. <laughs> so I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep that around. I might have to just retire it for a little while and then bring it back up once there's actually once there's actually women like Gina Carano or Chris Cyborg that come up knowing the other companies probably aren't going to have a women's uh, a women's division <clears throat> let's see here oh Back. Uh, it looks like Terrell's been doing has been uh, more in control of this than anything. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, Kawajiri, I think, cutting them open on that. We'll see what happens. And 1919, 2018, Terrell. 1919, it's time for a third round. Start a women's division in 2000 before retiring it in 2003. You just brought it back in 2007. Yeah. That's um, that I, that might be going the same way for me too. I'm just like, man, I've only got three fighters. I'd hate to do it to the women who are already here, but fuck, I can't I can't do a bunch of these fights all. The, you know, there's there's only so many fights, and there's literally no like I literally have pretty much all the women I can use at this point. Three. I think Terrell's takedown is probably going to help him out there. Yep, ends up making that one happen. David Terrell with the win. Thanks to sponsors, family, friends, supporters. He's got a lot of respect for Kawajiri, but not enough to win his debut. As David Terrell takes the win. There we go. Rodney Glunder, Joe Camacho. What I think of All Out, by the way. It was good. I thought it was pretty nice. There was a... Uh, it feels... It feels like they really do have a smorgasbord of a lot of things. You got your women's stuff. You got your regular stuff. You know, wrestling stuff. You got, you know, lucha. You got mud show crap. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing to know that Chris Jericho was crowned a world champion and then like an hour and a half previously was Jimmy Havoc giving, oh shit, that's it already. Jimmy Havoc was getting, you know, um, stapling people's, putting staples in people's foreheads and getting thumbtacks poured in his mouth and then duct taped over it. You didn't realize how early Shayna Baszler debuts? I'd imagine it's probably pretty soon because she's almost 40 now, isn't she? I don't know if she's hit 40 right now already, but if not, she's very close. Let me see here. Shayna Baszler, 1980. So that should that should put her at uh, 39. Yeah. I know she's from Sioux Falls as well. And she was trained by Josh Barnett. I wonder if that's an MMA thing, though. It seems weird to have Josh Barnett training someone in wrestling. <clears throat> Her in game debut is in 2003. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, so Rodney Glunder knocking the shit out of Joe Camacho that quickly. He's a lightweight. Maybe I should keep Glund Nah, Glunder. Will be, uh, we'll see how Glunder works in the heavyweight division. He can go either way. But either way, Dame checks his sponsors. Thanks his fans that came out to support him. Uematsu versus Thomas Denny. Pump for the EY. I, I don't think I've heard that. Oh, is that the... Um, to the DC show the AEW taping <clears throat> yeah 
Yeah, I heard that scalpers really over overestimated. And so when the show sold out, it realistically only sold out because scalpers took so many of the tickets and then couldn't sell it for shit. I wonder if that's happened in other cities. I wonder as they're opening... Oh, LAX? Oh, okay. The first TV show. Okay. Oh, EYFBO. Oh. Wait, is that their name? What what is their what is their name? Cuz I heard I heard them called like three different things when they debuted. I honestly thought they were going they were they were the um the um Oh, entertain your fucking balls. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of remember I kind of remember that before. They've been at LAX for so long. I forgot EYFBO was a thing. Shit, I wonder if because they got signed that they're not going to show up at um, Revolver anymore. I should see what their next show looks like. Um, Yeah, Uwe Matsu defeating Denny in 236 with a toehold. You got a three times up charge because you got an hour after they opened out of fear. Ouch. Ouch. I'm sorry. They just called them... Yeah, the Bariquas. That's what I heard them called. I'm like, are they really going to be the Bariquas? It'd be interesting. This new, this young American fighter reeks of drugs. John Jones? <laughs> I don't know. He seems to have large nostrils. I don't know what... I don't know if that means anything. Takeuchi and Genki Sudo. Should be interesting to see how both, especially Takeuchi coming off his um, his injury. <sighs> yeah, I wonder. I wonder if um, scalpers are pulling back here after the DC thing. Now, now with some of the new tapings, they'll just be like, uh, eh, maybe we won't take all the tickets. I guess we'll see what happens. Three times up charge just makes it 170 each for sweet seating. Oh, you got sweet seating. Nice. Make the trip to celebrate your 21st two days later so you're not too bothered. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, Suda got the takedown. Yeah, I haven't seen much from Revolver recently. I don't know. I think their next show is either this month or next month. We'll have to see. By the way, there's just a couple people in the... There's a, there's a, a handful of people in the in the internet wrestling community that it's like, I get that they have some form of authority, but they just don't seem likable at all. I don't know. That's just, that's just my own feeling. I just look and I see a name and I'm like, I know they're like somewhat credible depending on what the situation is, but God, do I just not, they're just not likable. Guess that doesn't really matter too matter too much. Genki Sudo getting the victory here as I finally pay a little bit of attention. 29-28, Sudo getting the win. Poor Takeuchi seemed like he was controlling the early onset there, but Sudo came back and got rounds two and three. Thanks, everyone connected to Team Wildman Valley Tudo. Man, Thomas Denny is uh, running a successful team, it seems. Uh, seems uh, he says a lot of respect for Takeuchi. Praises his toughness. Oh, we got this. Jeff Monson and Caro Parisian. Here we go. Dustin Tanner, the referee. I don't think I've ever heard that name. We are being 2008, you had Junior Dos Santos versus Cain Velasquez as the fight just before the semi-main on a fight night. 
Yeah, it was. In, it's it's always been interesting using like big name guys before they were big. So it's like, eh. Mm, oh, takedown attempt by Monson. I I look at my phone and then I look up. And I see that it is already that he is already trying to take him down, which is good because Parisian is a is a heavy favorite. So. Hopefully this means Monson can try to uh, keep him keep him at bay here. That'd be nice. Monson Monson is happy about this against Parisian. We could have an upset here. Did that say he looked shook. Oh, he was gonna shoot. We're thinking about all out seeing people still clamoring for CM Punk. I mean, I was I was at least like. You know, I wasn't clamoring for it, but I was like, eh, it'd be interesting if he showed up. You know? Yeah, I was like, eh, if he doesn't, oh well, still a good show. Oh my god, Monson taking him down. Monson might actually have the, uh, the big upset here. He's been able to control Parisian. This might be enough. Eh, maybe. We'll see. We'll see here. 2018 Monson, 1919. 1919. Monson's got to go one more round. He's got to. Oh, immediately takes down Parisian. Jeff Monson doing the old Noguera approach. First question was Khan is about punk. And he ended with the answer saying he liked to be asked about the show they actually did. Yeah, that sucks. <clears throat> of course, it'd be interesting if this rate you see a higher chance of a commentary role for him. Yeah. This is the first time since Punk left that I thought there was even a chance. I was too drunk to possibly be disappointed after all the crazy shit in the tag title match. Oh, my God. Just everyone killing each other. That's really what that was. Just everyone killing each other. Wow. Unanimous decision, Jeff Monson with the upset victory over Cara Parisian. Everyone considered Parisian the, the victor here. Monson, a heavy underdog, got the surprise win. Helped motivate him during his training. He's delighted to have caused the upset. Speaking of Josh Barnett and Jens Pulver. This should be interesting to say the least as well. 6'3", Josh Barnett, and 5'7", Jens Pulver. But actually still a fairly close uh, fight between them. We'll see what happens. So the row, they have the rest of the roster on strike. Triple H, the refereeing match from John Cena. Yeah, that was interesting. There was something I was going to look up. Fuck. I don't remember what I was going to look up. Ba, ba, ba. All right, that's all right. Oh, I was going to look up Revolver. That's really... bum, bum, bum. Sorry. I'm here, but I'm having to look at something. Here we go. 10 4. Ah, f that's when you're gonna have your, that's when you're gonna have your first, your next show. Revolver, the fuck. I mean, I guess they probably had to book it well in advance, but no, they should have known. Why are you booking? Why are you booking a show on October fourth? Why are you doing that? Fuck me. Upcoming shows October fourth. Fuck. Well. Okay. All right, 1919. Round three. This is where I really pay attention here. Burnett obviously taking Pulver down. Can't get the mount. Let's see. Burnett just kind of having his way with Pulver here. He is 110 pounds bigger than him. Hey, fuck you. October 4th is my birthday. 
I'm not saying it isn't a bad day. I'm not saying it's a bad day. I'm saying it's a bad day to put on a wrestling show. <laughs> well, Barnett obviously could have potentially lost that to Pulver, but I decided in the third round he was just going to have his way with him. But he has a lot of respect for him and his toughness. Main event time, Alexander Franco Nogueira making his big return after a couple of losses to uh, Steve Lee, looking to get himself back on track with a win over Giza Kalman in the final open weight match. Kalman is 130 pounds heavier, but that hasn't really been able to stop Nogueira too much. We'll see what happens. Try to get some grappling. It'll be interesting if he can actually uh, take him to the ground. That's usually how he works. I'm actually surprised that Noguera hasn't tried a takedown yet. <clears throat> still under a minute left in the round. I still haven't seen an, a, a takedown attempt. Maybe he's just waiting for his opportunity, but he's running out of time. There you go. He finally takes him down, but that was pretty much it. Both guys frustrated. Coleman might have been able to do it. Well, buzz in the air. Don't think many people are expecting Coleman to do this, but let's see what happens. Like I said, Noguera is going to have to probably get something going here in the second round. Coleman's just trying to keep up with uh, Noguera here. Come on, Noguera. What is he doing? He's, he's smothering him. He's trying to keep him at bay right now. Noguera should probably try to do a takedown. Try to get him into some submissions. There you go. Finally, always super late into the, into the round, though. And that is it. That might not be enough. Oh, yeah, we do have five rounds of this. Okay, that's right. This is the main event, so there is five rounds. So he's going to have to. There you go. Oh, oh, Coleman's going to try to take the uh, initiative on that one. Come on, Noguera. Oh, my God. Coleman gets the takedown this time. Things are not good for Noguera right now after dealing with Coleman. Oh, God, he got him just instantaneously. Holy crap. Lies on top of him, smothering him. Quick shoulder smash. Noguera just grabs a leg, turns him around, knee bar, forces the tap out, and there you go. Just like that. A knee bar out of nowhere for Noguera getting the win, and boy, is he back. Alexander Frank and O'Gara giving a name check to the people at uh, Joe Mora Jiu-Jitsu de Brazil. He sponsors friends, family. He shows respect to Coleman for his skill and toughness. He was doing quite well up until he got locked into the knee bar. <clears throat> 289 people. Critical rating good. Commercial rating good. We actually had a broadcast team with Stephen Quadros and John McCarthy. There you go. 2.2%. We are getting a move on. I like this. Noguera submission of the night. Glunder getting knockout of the I think he was the only knockout. Yeah, a lot of unanimous decisions. So we had a couple of finishes there and then a finish there. Fight of the night, Nakayama and J.R. Palmer. And there you go. We made $27,000. Sponsorship did well. Ads and subs were the main thing here that I'm really big on. Those ads and subs really helped us out. Also, not having to pay a lot of people a lot of money. <laughs> that was another thing. All right. Let's see here. Contract renewal for Glunder. Set that up. $1,400. Yeah, I could do that. Let's push them up to 12%. A lot of these people are going to get into the next, you know, echelon of uh, contracts here. There we go. 
Uh, Uematsu is also going to have to get that. $2,200, but he is he is a guy that I am putting a lot of faith in coming up. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get him signed. And then I'm sure it's going to be like, oh, by the way, Pride wants him. Or Pancrase or UFC, someone. Pancrase offering David Terrell a contract. Matt Lindlin beat Carlos Newton. Oh, Newton. That's all right. He's done, he's done pretty okay for himself so far. <clears throat> Here we go. And I'll go to the next day, but I won't I won't throw out any contracts, I think, right now. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. We have made it to June. Oh, there's a female. More females, but not any ones with faces. Oh, Militich Martial Arts, Lions Den Dallas. A lot more teams than actual uh, people. Floyd Sword. I'll have to think about that. Either way, almost at the two-hour mark with, with this. Go ahead and save this because I think it is time... We lost some money. Well, I mean, of course, we got ourselves a network, but we made good money um, at the end of this past month. We've done pretty well for ourselves on that. We only have the one upcoming event thus far, so I'm going to have to do at least one more event for July set up for here pretty soon because it's, what, seven, eight weeks out, something like that. <clears throat> We're going to have to figure out a light heavyweight champion at some point as well. That'll be helpful. Steve Lee defends his heavyweight title against Scott Adams at the next show. I think it'll do pretty well. We got a fair bit of uh, ranked guys, so that'll probably help us in the next deal. David Terrell's leaving, so it doesn't matter to me. Credibility's at 80%. That's pretty good. Stability's still pretty high, too. Hasn't really moved much. Popularity is up to 16.5. Well, it's moved up quite a bit. Um, yeah, we still got to get to like, what, 33, 34 to even get to the uh, mid-level. At least we're getting there. We're getting a couple hundred. We're, we're, we're hitting over 200 people now, which is good. We even got 337 in New Mexico. Maybe we should go to New Mexico more. You know, 289 in Nevada, 244 to Illinois. We got we got 337 in uh, New Mexico. I got to remember New Mexico, man. California did some good gates. Yeah. It's a long ways away from the 35 people in Iowa watching no-namers and Laverne Clark and Newton and, yeah. There you go. We're we're still getting there. We're still we're still a tiny company, but we're getting there. And we actually have a broadcaster. At some point I'm going to have to, you know, make sure to gather up a couple hundred thousand dollars and uh, get a bigger get a bigger um, uh, network. But at least we have that and we have um, Two, at least two uh, weight classes set up now, splitting up the uh, divisions, which is probably something that people probably are going to be like, thank God, finally. wonder why this doesn't say, oh, it's because we probably because we don't have a champion. wonder why company champions doesn't light up for this. Oh, well. Either way, I am tired, so I'm probably going to go relax for a little bit. And then eventually go to back to bed because it is late. So it is almost three in the morning. So I thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. It's been it's been fun. Just kind of uh, chit chatting and uh, just kind of you know releasing some of the things that have been that, I, that I've been uh, dealing with the last few days. Which I mean, it's not like any big deal. Just. 
listening to podcasts and having having the the people at the teriyaki grill not ever recognize me. <clears throat> Either way, I thank you guys for coming out. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will hope to see you guys next time.